Switcher South Africa in proud association with Change Cars. Change Cars is a trusted online website because they work with trusted dealers and the best insure in South Africa. Discovery Insure. Mm-hmm. You guys joined me in a very quiet vehicle. That's why I'm not saying much. And that's the end of the review. Okay, I'm just joking. Um, welcome back to the Social South Africa. I'm Nicky Nash as always. And today you guys joined me inside the Mercedes-Benz EQA. Um, this is my first electric Mercedes-Benz. Not my first electric car. My first electric car was a Volkswagen e-Golf. Um, click the link in the description box below for you to see that, that review. Um, so here I'm going to tell you what I think about the look of the car from the exterior into the look of the vehicle and the drive and I'm going to be answering questions that you guys really really need to stop asking but for the sake of this video I'm going to be answering those questions that are on your mind all the time when someone speaks about electric cars. But before we actually get into speaking about the car, I need to tell you about my secondary channel. Uh, that's Traveling with Nicky Nash. I, I show you guys when I'm traveling, when I'm going to Cape Town, Namibia, wherever, all those places. So stick, so please do subscribe to that channel. It would mean a lot to me. Um, then there's also t-shirts that are out now in, in July and going into August. The first batch of July has already been sold. So the next batch will be coming towards the end of July into August. But um, I've told you enough about that. Let's speak about the EQA. So the Mercedes-Benz EQA 250 is a very good look car so from the extra look of the vehicle it looks like a like a gla just that instead of just normal lights they've just put like a whole light bar in front and at the back so that's the difference um, from the normal gla because it's based on a gla hence an eqa um it's based on a gla and a gla is based on an a class so basically an a class gla electric shandies makes sense you know so they've went about making the the lights look beautiful so from the front um not really much of a change uh, except for the whole the grill well there's no grill this time around but overall for the front it looks good my party piece of this vehicle is honestly the back i like the way that light bar at the back lights up um it looks very beautiful so from the extra look of the vehicle the car looks beautiful for in this spec as well so this is the mg9 obviously but you can get different set of wheels um there's another one in fleet that has like multi-spoke wheels and then there's the one that i have it has the five six star um, spoke rim wheels and it's not too bad looks good but I prefer the other wheels I should be putting them on the screen somehow um, so extra look at the vehicle it looks good it's it does look spacious I mean you do get inside the vehicle you do get to see how spacious the vehicle is so for my personal preference I do like the GL the, the EQA I keep saying GL, the EQA um, it's spacious it looks good and what I like about the car is that when you're inside it looks like a normal vehicle nothing interior screams electric unless you're looking at your digital instrument cluster and it looks like a mercedes-benz like it's not it doesn't look any different from the gla that i had on test last year it looks like that um it looks like an a class it looks like a like a gla so i do like that mercedes didn't go too overboard trying to make this one look very electric because i know many bands or if someone was to say how do you make this car look different from a normal gla someone could have put electric on the side of the of the door or when you open the door it writes electric or it screams blue and all of that so there's there's hardly any blue here except for the ambient lighting um it's stitched in red so there's not much that gives it off that's an electric car from the interior so practicality when you're in the the second row of seats or the the, the back seats it's spacious enough for myself my head doesn't touch the top and i can put a, a proper two fits on top of myself to show you that there's enough space and then something that's a bit different is the sitting position at the back in terms of the, the bench right so the bench is very low it's not up it's not lifted up it's very low so your your knees do like your legs do make like a 90 degree angle when when, when your, your foot are flat on on the floor so space is quite spacious inside i do like that about the vehicle so now i'm gonna tell you about the drive of the vehicle moving on to like the drive of the vehicle the car drives good it's very smooth very seamless um you will enjoy driving this vehicle so in terms of the the range right people have a lot of range anxiety and my first electric car was a car that didn't have a lot of range you could get like 200 to 250 and that was the e that's the e-golf so I had a lot of range anxiety with that vehicle, but with this vehicle, I have I am having none of that. I'm currently above half tank, half tank of charge, um, of battery, <clears throat> and it's currently telling me that I have 272 kilometers to empty. So on a full 
tank of charge you'll be getting around 400 to 430 um, kilometers you know so and that's enough so a lot of people be like ah but you can't do a lot of kilometers with that ah it's not practical and this is where i start answering the questions of how to deal with an electric car how to live with an electric car so basically i'm gonna tell you like this in your petrol in your combustion vehicle right or diesel all those vehicles all the time you go to the garage do you go to the garage and say full tank you do not you know not all the time sometimes you just want 200 rand 300 rand to get you from let's just say i'm in centurion you know and i, and I want to go to midrand and that's like less than it's like less than 30 k's and you don't have fuel you're gonna pull a 200 because you know it's gonna get you to midrand so same thing with electric car you don't have to charge it too full and speaking of charging those car takes an hour 30 with a fast charger too full but you don't always have to charge it too full to get to your next destination so if you have 20 kilometers left of range but you need to travel 40 kilometers you can charge the car for like 10 minutes and then the car will be on like 50 you drive wherever you get there you charge so you treat it like that you don't have to charge it to full all the time and it's the same thing like having a phone when you have a phone, you do not charge your phone to full all the time. Sometimes your phone gets to 30% and you're like, you're like ah, it's too low, you want to charge it. You know, so you also don't wait for it. You also don't wait for your phone to die for you to start charging the view, for you to start charging again. You know? You don't wait for you, you don't wait for your phone to, to die and then you'll be like, oh 0%, percent ah, right, let me charge. Sometimes it waits until your phone like on 20% and then it tells you the warning, oh battery, don't even be like, oh, I need to charge. So that's how you deal with an electric car. And it's something that I need to emphasize so that you guys can understand that electric cars are the way to go. And I do understand that. But the problem is with electric cars is that they are very expensive. And speaking of very expensive, I'm gonna tell you about the price of those vehicles, and you know what? It is expensive. And that's my number one gripe about those vehicles, the price of the vehicle. But you know, we're gonna speak about the price of the vehicle at when I speak about what cost of ownership but for now I need to speak about the things I like and the things I don't like about this vehicle so moving on to the three things I don't like and three things I like about the vehicle the, we start with the bad number one thing I don't like about this vehicle those cars priced at mm, 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 I'm not gonna tell you just yet but the price of the vehicle I still have manual seats I do not have electric seats and that's an optional extra I do not understand why I'm paying so much money I'm not gonna tell you the price yet for and I still have to manually adjust um, my seats. The second thing I don't like is the fact that this vehicle, um, the auto hold system. So on a Mercedes Benz, you adjust the auto hold by hard pressing on the brake, and then it will give you the the auto hold. But it doesn't always it doesn't always kick in in this vehicle, and it's something I don't like. And the third thing I don't like is something that is not just with this vehicle. It is it's with every Mercedes Benz vehicle. So for example, right now I currently have the sunroof tilted up but oh that's uh, that felt good so i can't get the sunroof tilted up but for the sunroof to be tilted up it needs to open the whole shade like everything and then it'll tilt in some vehicles it open just a bit and then tilt so that's what i don't like about the vehicle i'm um, in terms of the sunroof and the sunroof doesn't open all the way no it does open outside but it opens like halfway you should be seeing overplay videos and that's what i don't like about the vehicle let's pick up about the good things about the car number one what i like about the car is the look of the vehicle it looks very beautiful i like the look of the vehicle especially more to the rear it looks very beautiful i like that light bar at the back in front at night that light bar is too good the second thing i like about the vehicle it has to do with the interior it feels good being where i am it looks good as well at night with the whole ambient lighting by now you guys should know that mercedes-benz is king of lights it's like it's like a nightclub in here so the second thing i like about the car the third thing i like about the car is the whole electric electric feeling of the vehicle the instant the instant talk the instant power delivery and speaking of power i didn't speak about that speaking of power you're looking at 140 kilowatts and 370 newton meters of torque and that is quite punchy the car does go and i do like that about the car you when you are driving you can tell that you know you're in something very quiet something that's very electric so that's something i like about the vehicle and that's my third thing i like about the vehicle now it's time to tell you about cost of ownership and finally i'm going to tell you about the price of this mercedes-benz uk 250 so now cost of ownership and this, this is where you guys want to know because you want to know the price of the vehicle brace yourself when this car was launched last year um so there's two model trims there's a, there's a progressive and then there's the mg line the mg is the one that i'm in when this car was launched an entry level eqa 250 was priced at 1.1 million rand last year last year for the amg the one i'm in before extras and all of that was priced at 1.2 million rand Right now, if you go to the Change Cars, um, the Sierra Zeta website and search for an EQA, there is two being currently sold for 1.3 million Rand. 
Uh, exactly. Exactly. So cost of ownership, if you finance this vehicle for 1.3 million rand at an interest rate of at an interest rate of 12 percent um, over five years, you're looking at paying 29,000 rand every month before insurance, before the amount of money you're gonna spend on charge. So on a full charge of this vehicle, or the amount you'll be spending on average in terms of charging this vehicle, should be around 300 to 400 rand. And that amount of money, let's just say you charge the vehicle three times. So let's just say that's 1,000 rand. You know you're essentially going to be spending on a monthly basis on this car, Mercedes-Benz EQA, 30,000 Rand. <laughs> That's a lot of money. And it comes to my final part of the video where I speak about, do I like the car? Would I buy the car? Would I recommend the car? One, do I like the car? I absolutely love the vehicle. I love, 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 love the car. Two, would I buy the vehicle? No, it's too expensive. I would not buy a vehicle. Um, that's 1.3 million rand. This specific one. There's no way I'm paying 1.3 million rand for Mercedes-Benz EQA. No ways. Um, unfortunately, I cannot. Um, yes. Three, would I recommend the vehicle? You know what? I wouldn't... This Electric cars are very hard to recommend because there's nothing... There's not, not, not like nothing, but there is not much to pick from. You know? But if you came to me and told me, Nikki, I'm looking for Mercedes-Benz EQA. I have... 1.3 million rand i am willing to spend the money on a mercedes-benz uka is it viable for me to go and buy the vehicle is it a good vehicle would, would I, will i have any regrets and all of that i will tell you you know what the mercedes-benz uka is a good vehicle you're gonna enjoy having the car you're gonna enjoy driving it if you have the money to spend 1.3 million rand spend it go buy it but this vehicle there's actually but there's other vehicles to consider that are electric and for, for me to actually speak about my recommendation, I need to have the vehicle on test. So, interestingly enough, after this one, when I go drop this one off, I'll be getting the Mercedes-Benz EQB. So, I'll tell you, is it is it viable to spend more so you, so you can get the EQB or spend less and get the EQA? I'm going to end the review there and then we'll continue on the Mercedes-Benz EQB. So, I'm Nikki Ness from Sweden, South Africa. I hope that answered the majority of your questions. Um, oh, last question. I just remembered it now. What do you do when you have load shading? The same thing you do with your phone. So when there's load shading, what do you do with your phone? You don't charge it. Why? Because you must probably charge it before load shading. So you can have enough battery to use when during load shading. So with this vehicle, if you know your schedule is at 8 o'clock, what are you going to do? You're going to charge it before load shading. Ah! can't teach you everything so yeah i'm nikki nash from Sweden, south africa and i hope i answered all your questions and i'll see you on the next video which should be the mercedes-benz uh um, maybe it's not then i don't know it should be the mercedes-benz uka so i'm nikki nash from Sweden, south africa i hope you guys liked the content and i'm signing out